Everybody's talking about CBDC, central bank, digital currency. Some are saying it's a great idea. You know, my question is, in that similar vein, what would make a well-designed uh, CBDC system that helps overcome some of these existing issues that we have seen uh, with banks and with just the delivery of stimulus checks. Some are saying it's a horrible idea. Are you interested in giving these economic central planners more power over our economy, more power over your uh, daily life and your economic activity? Uh, and I answer that question, uh, H-E double, double hockey sticks, no. Who's right? All right, so if you get value from this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into it. What is CBDC? The easiest way to explain it is, think about Bitcoin, right? It's a decentralized currency that's used, but it's decentralized. No one's regulating it. No one knows who owns it. Now imagine if a Bitcoin currency is created, but it's controlled and regulated by the government. That's CBDC. So how much momentum are they creating with this whole concept of CBDC? Who's for it, who's against it? According to AtlanticCouncil.org in May 2020, only 35 countries were considering a CBDC. Today, 114 countries are exploring CBDC equal to 95% of the global GDP. Currently, 60 countries are in the advanced phases of exploring exploring their own CBDC, while in the last two years, 11 countries have already launched their own currency into full operations. We're talking Nigeria, Bahamas, Anguilla, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, Montserrat, St. Vincent, St. Kitts, Nevis, and most recently, Jamaica. Now, obviously, these are all small countries. They don't have high GDPs, but G7 economies have now entered the development stage of CBDC, and China's pilot is set to be rolled out to most of the country sometime this year. And on top of that, 18 of the G20 countries are now in the advanced stages of CBDC development and nearly every G20 country has invested a significant amount of time and resources into these projects over the past six months. So obviously we're far along. This isn't something that they're just kind of playing around with. But what do you think? You think it's a good idea or a bad idea? Here's what they're saying the pros and the cons are. Pros. Increase payment efficiency, complement current forms of money and financial services, deter criminal activity, improve international payment options, potentially reduce net transaction costs, benefiting lower income households. So now here are the cons. Overhauling the current financial system could create instability, the effectiveness of monetary policy may deteriorate, operational difficulty, cybersecurity risk, and last but not least, privacy as there's a loss of ability to transact anonymously. So let's talk about that one, anonymously. Do you like to be anonymous with what you're purchasing? What if I ask you right now, you go to your job and I'm the boss, I'm trying to hire you for a job. And I say, hi, before we consider you as an employee, could you please submit all your credit card and your expenditure on what you've spent the last 90 days or you know six months? We'd like to see what your buying habits are. What would you say to me? Actually, what would you say to me? Are you not upset right now or offended right now? You'd say, who the hell are you? to ask me a question like that. You know when's the last time somebody asked you where they tracked everything you bought? You were probably 17 years old and you were using mommy or daddy's credit card and they tracked every one of your purchases. Why? Because you were a kid. So let me get this straight, US government. I'm 44 years old, a grown man of four kids, and you get to see everything I buy, invest in, what kind of data does that give you? Do you now automatically, you can go based on seeing what purchases people make and say, I know where this guy leans. I know what this guy's doing. I know what that guy's doing. Let's help this guy with more financing. Let's hurt this guy, let's hurt that. So you know what I'm saying? So are you okay with people tracking everything you're buying, your purchasing, decision-making process? And what if all of a sudden you get too loud? And what if right now, like the silencing of somebody is if you are against vaccine? But it may be something else a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. What if you have an opinion? What if you're, there's a cultural war again in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? You're like, no, I'm not against these robots doing this. What if one day they're like, hey, robot can be a better president than the average person, let's vote for a robot like that. Are you out of your mind? Are you serious? But if all of a sudden you fight against it, hey, bring that access down. Hey, you can't say too much. You know, his digital currency, her digital currency. What if? Now somebody may say, Pat, that's not going to be happening. Well, okay, no problem. I think an author back in the days wrote a business book called Only the Paranoid Survive, Andy Grove. Let's stay a little bit paranoid, okay? I want you to think about this. Who's for it? Well, the top five banks are for it. They think CBDC is a great idea. Why would Chase be of A? Well, City, why would these guys want CBDC? Well, because there's not a founder in those banks. Those banks are pretty much working for the US government. No, they're not. 
Yes, they are. The government dictates the rates. The government gives them money. The government bails them out. They have to work with the government on a daily basis, pretty much. So they're pretty much owned by the government. Not necessarily it's still on the stock market, but they communicate more with the government than they do with you. They don't want no Bitcoin to blow up. They want CBDC. With Bitcoin, they can't control you. It's decentralized. They like control. Are you okay with the way they're thinking? If you are, you should be for CBDC. Elizabeth Warren is for CBDC. AOC is for CBDC. US government is for CBDC. Who's not for CBDC? Free thinkers, entrepreneurs, libertarians, guys who are innovators, disruptors, who want to live their lives and kind of be left alone. They want to make the decisions that they're making and as long as they don't break the laws, they're kind of going out there about themselves. These guys don't want to be controlled. So this whole CBDC thing comes down to two things. If you like to be controlled, you're for CBDC. If you want to think for yourself and not be controlled, you're not for CBDC. If you like somebody else to make decisions for you, you are for CBDC. If you want to think for yourself and if you make a mistake, great, no problem, you pay the price for it, no problem, you're not for CBDC. This is what it's really coming out to. And by the way, many, many years ago, when everybody was talking about Bitcoin, I said my biggest fear about Bitcoin is Bitcoin scares the most powerful institution in the world, which is the US government. Governments don't like when they cannot control a currency. They can't control Bitcoin. They're gonna do whatever they can to trash it, bash it. They'll talk about all the criminal activity that happens in Bitcoin to get people to eventually say, yes, this is not a good idea. It's better if the government controls it. And then you'll go over here, and then all of a sudden, 10 years later, you're like, this was a bad idea, but it's too late by now. Everybody's using their money through the whole CBDC that they're selling to. And by the way, you know how they say things like, well, look, we're becoming a cashless society. How many places are you going to nowadays that they don't even accept cash? Yeah, but we've been using cards for a long time. And it's okay. Well, the fees are high. What if you can save 3%? I'm okay paying 3% fees in the money that I'm transferring. And it taking a day or two and no one knowing about my decision except me and that credit card company. Then you, the government, knowing exactly what everybody else is doing. Again, freedom, you're not for CBDC. Control, you are for CBDC. But I want to hear your thoughts. If you got value from today's episode, give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel, and comment below. And by the way, a part of why they're able to capitalize off this to sell the American people on CBDC being a good thing is because of what happened with Silicon Valley and the banking crisis. I did a private webinar on that a week ago. If you've never seen it, it's data intel we've never shared before. Our research team pulled up all this data. I highly recommend you seeing it. Click here to watch the banking crisis webinar. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.